Hello and welcome to today's video. Normally at this point I say from South Cambridge, however, I'm not in South Cambridge as you may well be able to tell. I'm actually in a little town called Donaghadee, which is in the Northern Ireland coast. However, this is not about my travels. Today's video is about solar. So I'm gonna to touch on three points. The first point is cost and payback. The second point is usage and smarter usage. And lastly, I'm gonna give my honest feedback on how I feel about solar today. Before I start the video, however, I want to give a bit of a, a disclaimer. I'm not a solar expert. I don't profess to be. I'm a dad, I'm a husband, and I'm trying to find the most efficient way to run my house. So anything I share in this video is subject to your criticism or your questions or your comments. Please do leave them and engage. So on that note, let's jump in. My solar system was activated on the 17th of June 2022. Today's date, which at the time of writing this, is the 19th of August 2022. So that's just over two months. Since then, as a household, we've consumed 2,162 kilowatt hours of electricity. With a current standing charge of 39p, which is what you pay every day before you use any electricity, and 29p per kilowatt that you do use, that would cost me a total of 651 pounds and 16 pence. Taking into account this is pre the October rise, this is about 325 pounds 58 per month. With the solar system active, we've pulled 435 kilowatt hours from the grid of that 2162, which has cost us around 150 pounds and 33 pence. That gives me a difference of 500 pounds and 83 pence. This is 500 quid that I would have had to have paid to the electricity company. Let's take a closer look at some of the figures and see just how long it would take to pay back a decent system, which may cost you around 15 grand. Energy usage fluctuates throughout the year, with summer being the months that you're likely to use less electricity. They also happen to be the months that a solar system will generate the most electricity. These payback figures will be subject to change if the price of electricity goes up further. If it does, the payback time will be reduced, possibly by a considerable amount. I'll take a heavy user of electricity for this example. As I mentioned earlier, electricity companies charge a daily fee for being hooked up to the grid. It's roughly 39p for most suppliers. To get our base figure usage, that means we're paying £142.35 for the year before we use any electricity. A heavy use example would be 13,500 kilowatt hours. So if you had an electric car, air conditioner, a couple of fridges, induction hob, hot tap, you could well find yourself up at these levels. At the current price of 29p per kilowatt hour, that yearly bill would be £3,915 without the stand-in charge, which of course you have to pay, so that brings it to £4,057.35p. If energy prices remain the same after five years, that total would cost £20,286.75. All of a sudden that £15,000 solar system doesn't seem so bad. Minus that off the £20,286.75, that leaves £5,286.75p. That gives you £1,057.35 per year for electricity. Based on the earlier example I gave a two month use, my estimated bill would be £901.98p for the year. That still leaves me a bit of change from the £1,057.35, well, £155.37 to be exact. Those pence do go a long way. These are all very rough figures and do not take into account the cheaper night tariffs like Economy 7 or a smart tariff. I've just moved on to a smart tariff with a 7.5p charge per kilowatt hour of four hours each night. This will make payback much quicker. That brings me on to my next point. Smarter use equals greater savings. I couldn't grasp how solar would work for me until I actually had it. My thinking was it goes onto the roof, generates electricity, and that's the end of it. I hadn't thought of some of the more obvious points around usage, such as numerous items all demanding electricity at the same time, 
would have an impact on what was going on with this system. In fact, pre this experience, I didn't really understand what a kilowatt hour was. I never really had cause to think about it. Let's take a look at the cloud interface and I'll try my best to explain how this works. Each one of these little icons represents a different part of the solar system. Starting at the top, this is our panels. In my case, that's 20 in total with the ability to generate 7.8 kilowatt hours. Next in the center is our house. The figure is the current demand and it jumps around a fair bit, depending on what you're doing. Then we have our battery status. And on the far right, that's the grid. The way the energy flows gives you a nice animation of what is happening with the system. Being a 7.8 system means that at peak times and clear skies, as long as I don't go over the 7.8, I won't pull anything off the grid. If I did and had a charge in my battery, I could go up to a maximum of 10.3 kilowatt hours before pulling anything off the grid. I've just tried this by putting my underfloor heating on. It didn't seem to work the way I thought, but in theory it should. The battery does have restrictions. The storage of the battery is 16.4 kilowatt hours. It can only charge at a maximum of 2.6 kilowatt hours and discharge at the same rate. From my experience, I've seen it sit around 2.5 and not 2.6. You can specify when the battery charges and discharges via the cloud. This is where smarter use comes in. Now I've moved to the lower nighttime tariff using the four hours at 7.5p to charge my batteries in my car and ensure I use as little as possible, if anything, of the more expensive tariff during the day. This is something I'll need to consider going into the winter unless I add a second inverter and battery. As it stands though, I need to draw on the assumption that the shortest day is 8am sunrise and 4pm sunset. It'll be about six hours where I can generate off solar. Of course, this will be a learn as I go exercise. So how has my usage changed? I don't use devices or appliances all at the same time. I don't leave the oven on longer than it needs to be. I tend to, at the minute, only charge my car during the day. This will change once I move on to the smart tariff. Speaking of the car charger, some of you noticed that I have a granny charger. For those who don't know what this is, and I did have to Google it, it's a three pin slow charger, as I'm waiting for my give energy charger. This will mean that I can leave my car plugged in and the system will prioritize where the electric goes depending on how I set it. At the minute, as soon as I plug my car in, it automatically pulls around two kilowatt hours. An example of not using the plans at the same time would be breakfast time when I'm doing a coffee for example and cooking some eggs in the induction hob I'll try and split these up so it's not pulling too much at one time my goal is to use as little as I can off the grid smart tariffs help with this and I'm now seeing the real benefits of the battery storage I also reluctantly feed back into the grid at 5p per kilowatt hour this is then sold at 29p or so yeah you don't really get it I've been known to switch everything on during sunny days to stop feeding back to the grid. How has my opinion of solar changed? Well, from years ago when I felt like it was a bit of a scam, I've got to a place where I love it. I talk about energy use with almost everyone I meet. This would never have been the case last year, but it's at the forefront of most people's minds. Yes, I'm truly the life and soul of the party. Years ago, the payback was 10 or 15 years. I had in my head that solar would cost 25k and I could never afford it. Now I'm in a place where I think to myself, how can I do without it? So there you have it. I hope that helps in some ways. I appreciate there may be mistakes within this video and I'm the first to put my hands up to them. So if you spot any, do let me know in the comments. There's a growing community interested in solar. My family now put me into a new classification as the most boring individual in the world. So whatever you're doing for the rest of the day, have a good one and I will catch you later.